So this morning I was invited on to BBC Northern Ireland. What an interesting conversation. And um, I think they had around 10 callers. Only one of them were um, was against. It was all about masks and whether we should wear face masks. And all I have to say to the BBC is thank you for inviting me on. I don't think the presenter felt comfortable. At one point he said, I wish we hadn't invited you on. Um, which is a shame because that's the debate that I think needs to happen. And uh, was the presenter impartial and balanced? No. Uh, were the people that called in <laughs> impartial and imbalanced and balanced? No. But I'm having to, I'm having to offer a counter narrative at the moment, which is why on my YouTube channel, people like Professor Robert Endress from Imperial College London has come to me, uh, Associate Professor Keith Baberstock, GP Rick O'Shea, numerous others have come to me saying there isn't a balance in the media. I don't know why this conversation's not being had. As I said, I've stopped watching the mainstream media, possibly because I wasn't hearing any counter narrative. Um, the only counter narrative you hear was a counter narrative from the press to policy that government was taking. I agree with you, which is why I've had professors coming to the channel and talking to me and saying, especially ones that are watching the media in Germany, they're very confused by what they're hearing from our media here, for example, from the BBC, without that more balanced view. Um, but that's what I would say. Do you think this is going to change people's views? And I only ask you this because you have worked for the BBC and I have as well. Do you think this is going to maybe cause uh, trust issues with the media and with the government if they don't feel they are adequately reflecting people's real situations um, and we need guidance don't we? we and i did the best that i could to get that argument across um, but it was very very difficult and and people said that i was crazy i was called a conspiracy theorist you know there's a, a paper out at the moment from scientists from oxford university talking about we may already have levels of herd immunity and of course i'm very concerned by uh, from uh, people that are scared about going out and going shopping when others aren't wearing a mask and i i went shopping yesterday with my 88 year old neighbor and i gave him a mask because i appreciate that he's scared of the killer virus which is what they called up the bbc uh, or one of the guests did i'm very aware and very respectful of the messaging that they've received that doesn't mean I agree with it. And I think it's something really obvious is happening now that really must be debated. And it's essential that it's debated. And, I, and I'm very grateful to the BBC for having me on, even though it wasn't a particularly pleasant experience. But I ask the BBC to have more and more debates like this. So the debate is, if people refuse the vaccination because they're conspiracy theorists, because they've been watching social media, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, because they've been following organisations like ACU 2020 uh, or Keep Britain Free or the numerous scientists from organisations like fr from Oxford University, for example, and many other institutions in the UK talking about herd immunity and, and whether vaccinations being rushed through. So if people are having these conversations on social media and they don't take the vaccines, what happens then? So what other choice do we have other than for those at low risk under 65 to take off the masks, build up herd immunity to protect the vulnerable this winter? It's either that or mandatory vaccination. And I've heard from people about masks is fine. To be honest with you, I would gladly wear a mask. But when it comes to mandatory vaccination or mandatory contact tracing apps, look at my interview with Professor Mark Ryan from the University of Birmingham saying, he can see a situation where we have to download apps to get into supermarkets, to get to work, to go on public transport. And they'll be linked, the SIM card will be linked to our ID like it is in China. If we go down that road, there will be riots. There is enough of a rising up on social media, rightly or wrongly, of people that believe that we should have a choice when it comes to vaccination and giving our data away. That's what I'm concerned about. So thank you for, to the BBC for inviting me on. I'll try and get a copy of the, um, of the debate, which I'll put on, on the channel. Um, but uh, it's uncomfortable to be unpopular. And I am unpopular on a national, regional, BBC, local programme. But I'm not unpo unpopular on Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. I'm not unpopular. And I am on the pulse of public opinion. I really do think I am. 
but I'm very, very open to challenge. I'm very open to being criticised. I'm very open to ridicule. Um, don't call me a conspiracy theorist, but please do provide evidence and debate with me. I'm quite happy to be debated. I'm quite happy to disagree or put forward my evidence and to disagree, um, agree to disagree. It's healthy and it's necessary and it is absolutely essential at the moment.